Well, good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're all here in the Lord's house. And uh, together, he will feed us because uh, a sermon is not always your own. It's something that you put together because you're begging him to show you what, what you want me to pre present or provide. And it's for all of us, including me, because uh, I've never given a sermon that he didn't enter into it somewhere and tell me, change this or say that. And it's, it's, a, it's a deal, a partnership going on. So I'm kind of looking forward to what happens here. <laughs> okay, the name, of, uh, the name of the sermon is Let It Rain. We Christians who read the Bible, we know and understand there will be a latter rain. And the latter rain, well, let's see. This is amazing that I have, <laughs> believe it or not, I forgot to bring my sermon today, went home and got it while they were singing, and it's not here. Now this is a battle, this is a war zone. And so, here we go. The, uh, the latter rain and the former rain are for what we already know. I'm speaking to the choir here. <clears throat> You put the seed in the ground, and the former rain is to sprout that seed, which is the learning about Christ and the spiritual realm and the war between Christ and Satan for our souls. Okay? And in the field, if that seed doesn't sprout, if you don't get that early rain, then the latter rain, which is for the maturing, of the harvest. And we're talking about God's view of us. We are his harvest. This earth is his field. And he's harvesting souls for his new earth. Now in the process of that, if you see a stalk of corn and you've got a ear on there and you open it up and it's only that long and it's a little skinny thing, you'll see the little silks go to the little kernels that are just barely visible. And that latter rain brings the fluid that is going to fill those kernels and sweeten those kernels and, and ripen the harvest so that there's something to harvest. But how can that latter rain bring the harvest if the seed is still in the ground dry because it didn't get the early rain? And so that's why we put our kids in our schools. On, on Sabbath we have our children getting the early rain. And uh, we too, at any age, can get the early rain. Now, what I'm about to share is visible on an individual basis, or a corporate basis, or a universal basis. So the outpouring of the latter rain can be happening in our lives personally, at different times, or to a nation, or a group in a church, that's corporate, or the whole planet when the end is coming. Now, the latter rain, probably the majority of Christians are unfit for the latter rain because they haven't really gotten enough of the early rain to be ready for the latter rain. And that's a relationship with God that's not developing. So we need to develop that relationship along the way. We're told that the, loud cry, that, the, uh, that the latter rain will be pouring out and some will not even know that it's happening while others are receiving it. Because it's a spiritual thing. You don't see it, you don't feel it. It's spiritual. Now the, the latter rain also has, there's, there's a series of prophecies throughout scripture that when you look at prophecy in scripture, what you see is this prophecy is happening and it's fulfilled. And then we know that we're beyond that and the next prophecy is taking place or the next or the next or the next and one comes after the other. 
keeping that in mind, I've got a surprise for you later in the sermon. Now we also know about another prophecy called the loud cry. The loud cry is the three angels message being given from 1844 when the large time prophecy ended and was fulfilled. The three angels message went out. By the way, the three angels message is the last message from heaven to earth. That's it. Listen to it, believe it, and get ready. The, uh, the three angels' message, it is the third angels' message that is probably the most interesting and the most critical. There's talk about what's going to happen to the folks who are not ready. It's pretty ugly, pretty serious, but they bring it upon themselves. The, uh, the loud cry is the th three angels' message, especially the third angel's message, being intensified, being empowered by the outpouring of the latter rain, which is the Holy Spirit's power for God's people to mature and have the strength of the Holy Spirit in us to go out and take the loud cry to the whole earth. This is universal. This is the last cry. And the cry is, Babylon has fallen. Babylon is God's enemy. Babylon is Satan's flood that went out to devour the Christ child. God has one truth, one church. It keeps the Bible. It keeps the Ten Commandments. If you offend in one, you offend in all. So if I'm keeping the whole law, as it says, keep the, the saints are the ones who keep the whole law. But if you offend in one, you offend in all. What that's saying is if I'm keeping all the law all week, but I only offend on the weekend, and all I do is go out and murder people, or just steal a candy bar, maybe just the littlest one. Either way, it's not going to happen in the new earth. I won't be there. Okay? Now this loud cry, this third angel's message, is going out to the whole world, and we think that prophecy is going to take some time. You can see that we still have a ways to go. So there's another prophecy. The latter rain, we need to pray for it, because God never forces it. He never twists our arm. Satan will lie and cheat and do everything he can to get us to sin, but God says, go and sin no more, and he lets us decide. So we have to ask, and then we receive the outpouring of the latter rain. So be asking for it, okay? And uh, as we ask for the outpouring of the latter rain, which is the Holy Spirit's power, you remember the, uh, you remember the virgins. Some of them had empty, empty lamps. That oil was the presence of the Holy Spirit, power to burn and make light. And uh, as we go out to the world with that loud cry, reaching the whole world, we're going to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. There will, we're, we're told there will even be miracles that we see and are affected by as we go to do that job. And uh, the, the message of the third angel will swell to a loud cry, and the whole earth will be lighted with the glory of the Lord. Thousands will be converted in a day. Now God says... I have sheep of another fold. God says, Babylon has fallen. That means the false churches that Satan sent as a flood to hide the Christ child, to devour him. You can't hardly find a church that keeps Ten Commandments in the flood. But that goes on and says, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. He emphasizes it the second time because what he's saying is, Babylon has fallen and is sinful, has fallen because I'm going to destroy her. That's the second fallen. Time has run out. It's beginning. And this is the time of trouble. Now, there's, there's three times of trouble in Scripture. You've heard it said there's the little time of trouble, and there's the great time of trouble, 
And then there's the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, we're about to enter the little time of trouble. And, and I'll explain that a little more. Um, the little time of trouble is the beginning of the Sunday law. And we'll go through some trouble. And the second time of trouble, the great time of trouble, is actually the plagues. And in the second time of trouble, in the second time of trouble, is the time of Jacob's trouble, which is when God's people are sealed to him. Probation is closed. But we're worried and wondering, have I asked forgiveness for every sin? Am I right with God? I mean, we're not sure. Okay, so we're going to be a little bit stressed there. That's the time of Jacob's trouble, wrestling with God. Am I okay with you? How are we, you know? And uh, the fallen churches take their stand on the fact that Satan said, I will be like the Most High. He wants to be God. He wants to be worshipped. And so what we have here is a little bit of a wrestling match. God has ten commandments. Those are God's commandments. And then there are ten other commandments that are similar to God's, but they're man's commandments. And God says, in vain they do worship me, keeping for doctrines the commandments of men. So do remember, there are the commandments of God and the commandments of men, and that's Satan wanting to be like the Most High, worship me. There are six labor days, and the seventh day was hallowed. Hallowed means potentially lethal. And those six days that are for labor and all your work were the only ones Satan could choose from. And he chose the day that the pagans were worshiping the sun because God rejects that worship. And so we have these two entities now battling for our souls. One wants to take us to eternal death. One wants to take us back to what we had. Eternal life made in the image of God, holy and sinless, eternal life with the angels in heaven. That's our choices. They're big. And it's based on whose commandments are we going to obey? You, you remember um, in Daniel... I think it's chapter 25. Wish to have my notes, but we're doing okay. In Daniel, there was a prophecy that man would think to change the times and laws of God. Sabbath is a law of God. Sabbath deals with time, the seventh day. And man thinks he changed it. If I stand on a cliff looking down and I think I'm a bird and I jump off, what happens? Did I change it? Am I a bird? Okay, same thing applies, that principle, to God's law. He says, I change not. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Isaiah 66 says we'll be keeping the Sabbath in the new earth. And why not? He's right. I trust him. Took a while to figure it out, though. But uh, so in this event of this, this war that started in heaven 6,000 years ago, and the two sets of commandments, man's commandments have gotten rid of the second commandment altogether. And to make up for that, man took the tenth commandment and split it in two. If you notice, man's commandments say, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, and thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Those are nine and ten. But it's the same commandment, the same principle. Covetousness. Don't be covet. Don't covet. And so why do they say it twice? Because they removed number two. And of course, number four is about who you worship. Man's commandments say keep the Sabbath holy. 
keep the Lord's day. I think it says keep the Lord's day holy or whatever. And then they say, well, Sunday is the Lord's day. But in the commandment, the fourth commandment, God says, I am Lord of the Sabbath. Now, who are you going to believe? Man, man's commandments say that uh, Sunday is the Lord's day. And God's commandments say, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. So if we read carefully and watch, there's no confusion. But he says, my people are lost for lack of knowledge. So we have to read. We don't want to listen to the pastor. Any pastor. Because he's a man who has sinned and has fallen and makes mistakes. And when the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. Go to the word of God and find out for yourself what the truth is. Then you know that you know, and you can speak with authority. And that's what a good pastor does. He knows that he knows, because he's been there. In the meantime, with this battle going on, we have the latter rain pouring out. You have to pray for it to get it in his power from the Holy Spirit to give a loud cry to the whole earth. Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Come out of her, my people. What does that mean? That means the flood that Satan sent that has all these people keeping the wrong day, keeping the wrong commandments, are some of those are God's jewels. And he's saying, it's time to come out. Why? That you partake not of her sins and receive not of her plagues. These plagues are not for God's people. Oh, it won't be fun. But we're going to get through them. And the others are destroyed by the brightness of his coming. So it's important to know Babylon has fallen, has fallen, come out of her. My people, those gems need to come out. And the loud cry, which requires the latter rain, is going to take place. And that's what's going to bring people out of Babylon into God's church that keeps all Ten Commandments. And... While they're coming in, there's a thing called the great shaking. That's another prophecy. How long will that take? You see, all these prophecies have to happen yet. All right? The great shaking is the purification of God's church. Those gems in the Sunday-keeping churches will come into God's church because they're searching for truth and he judges the heart. They belong in his camp. And many of the people in God's church will go out because when God searches the heart, he finds that they're in the church for the wrong reasons. Maybe they were born in the church and don't care. They just do it because they have friends there. It's, it's about, about your morality, uh, other things. And, and those people, when they face the time of trouble, and you won't be able to buy or sell, for example, they're not looking at the new earth saying, I'm going to a better place and I'm going to have eternal life restored. God's going to have his victory. They're not looking at that. They're saying, what? I won't get my paycheck? I won't get my retirement check? I won't be able to buy my kids food because I can't buy or sell? They're going to take my kids away because I'm a bad parent? I'm not going to let that happen. World, let me go with you. I'll keep Sunday. Well, you're going to have comfort for a season, a short one. And after that, you miss out because you chose to offend God. So these are critical things. We've got the latter rain. How long does that take? We've got the loud cry. How does, long does that take? The loud cry is the fourth angel's message, in case you need a term. And uh, it causes this great shaking, which is the cleansing of his church. Now, there's also other prophecies yet to be fulfilled. The Sabbath will be proclaimed more fully, obviously. It'll go to every tongue, every nation, every people, every kindred. It hasn't reached them all yet. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is working on that rapidly. 3ABN has got Russian, Spanish. Now we're doing French. We're, we're doing our little piece. But it's moving forward. 
There's also the judgment of the righteous living. Now, if you think about God looking at us and saying, how are you? Are you walking with me or are you walking with self in the world? That determination is made when we have to choose between God's commandments and man's commandments. That's like saying, who do you belong to? Make your choice. And so that's going to be taken care of. And then there's also receiving the final seal before the close of probation. God's people are going to be sealed and Satan's people are going to be marked. Sealing takes some time. Actually, the four angels are told to hold up before they let go because God wants to seal his saints in their foreheads. And that needs to take place. So all of these prophecies seem to be stretched out and it's going to be quite a while, so don't worry about it. And, and the focus of what I really want to say today in this is when we're told that Jesus comes like a thief in the night, does that mean he's evil? Does, does that mean that... Uh, He's sneaky. No, when he comes, every eye shall see him. Angels, thousands upon thousands, ten times ten thousand. All these things are obvious, and that he comes with the trump of God. It won't be quiet either. So he's not coming as a thief in the night to hide. What he's saying is, it's going to be short. I'm going to come so fast you won't know it. You'll say, well, you know what? If I'd have known that thief was coming last night... I would have bought that guy's offer for an alarm system where it not only lit the lights and flashed and made noise so the neighbors would know, but it also goes to the police department and lets them know what address to get to right now. I could have had that. But what he says when he says that he comes like a thief in the night is, you aren't going to have time to do that. You need to be ready before that. So we need to be looking at our characters now and asking for the outpouring of the latter rain. And that eternal seal takes time. And with all of these things, thinking that we have time, the real crux of my message today is the prophecies usually follow one after another after another after another. But Satan's up to something. He knows his time is short. And he's trying to capture souls. And a good way to do it is to put them to sleep. We know about Laodicea, the seven churches, and the last one is asleep. Laodicea. And then, knowing that his time is short, we're told the last movements will be rapid. The last movements will be rapid was not a message given to the world. That message was given to God's church. So we are going to be surprised how fast it's going to be. The church will be surprised. The last movements will be rapid. This is the point. I've got six prophecies here that we're talking about are going to happen. And they're going to happen so fast, we'll wonder what happened. Because if you watch, the latter rain, the maturing of God's harvest, his people, those who mature, are empowered to give the loud cry to the world. So the latter rain causes the loud cry. The loud cry is the result of having already gotten the latter rain and having the latter rain going on. So those two prophecies are side by side parallel. Now if you have the latter rain and you're given the loud cry, you're going to cause the shaking. That means three of these prophecies are side by side. They're, they're what do you call it when it's together? You, they're unified. They're, they're at the same time. Now, 
if there's a great shaking, some people are going to go out of the church and some people are going to come into the church. And that's going to decide who's right with God and who's wrong with God. That's a judgment. He says, when I come, my reward is with me already. He's coming to get those that pass the test. The reward is, I got you, you're mine. Let's go. And that final eternal seal is the result of your choice. You're either sealed because you're keeping God's commandments, because you love him and trust him, or you're marked with the commandments of men. So, the eternal seal, or the mark, is part of this sudden occurrence. The last movements are rapid because all six of these things are happening, happening simultaneously. And Satan's trying to catch us asleep while we're still in our seats. And we jump up and say, whoa, this is happening. I need to get my character right with God. I'm sorry. There's no latter rain for you. It's too late. Probation is closing. He stands up and says, it is done. It is finished. Let the righteous remain righteous. Let the holy remain holy. You can't become holy now. It's determined. And that's Satan's trick. Get them while they're sleeping. Make it all happen at once so that we can uh, catch a few more. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we need to encourage each other to get our characters right with God, back to the image of God we were made in, redeemed, sanctified, restored, loving the commandments, hating sin, and deciding to join those holy angels on those holy streets and walk with them for eternity. It's worth it. The prize is worth it. So we need to encourage each other. And those last prophecies are going to be simultaneous, so we need to be ready and have Christ's character ahead of time. Once the time of trouble begins, it'll be a flash in the pan. And that, folks, is my sermon.